You're listening to Embrace Your Snake, the number one podcast for creatives and entrepreneurs that have big ideas and just need a little help to get them out into the world. I'm your host, Michael Jackson. For over 25 years, my next guest has been mastering his online marketing and advertising skills. He currently owns several multi-million dollar e-commerce businesses. He owns the software as a service company, SyncSumo, and his Facebook ads agency called Zenfusion. He's super passionate about his business acceleration coaching business called 8020 Business, where he teaches entrepreneurs and business owners how to leverage his business acceleration life cycle formula that he created and has fine-tuned over the last 12 years. He's notorious for doubling and tripling the revenues of businesses within 12 to 24 months, from six to seven figures and seven to eight figures. I'm pleased to introduce Justin Lofton. Justin, how are you doing? I'm well, brother. So good to see you. It's been it's been too long, my friend. It has been way too long, and I want you to know I was, I have mentioned this to you before, and I've written this in uh, forums that you have helped me so much. And uh, it I'll start with that to just the basics with this mindset and actually understanding that you know to make it in business, you've got to change your mindset so that you're actually wanting to have those things come into your life and into your business and being able to help people. And I see the things that you do with helping uh, your family, helping kids, helping people in general, and it flows into your business. And it is an amazing thing. I wish more people would do what you're doing. Well, I think we're going to see a lot more of that uh, in in 2020 and beyond. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. Well, when I first got in touch with you and we were discussing like what we want to talk about on the show, uh, you came up with a, a great idea and um, but uh, people will, we're going to sh- talk about your, about sync soon we're going to talk about Zen fusion and we'll do that at the end. But I want people to understand that you are a straight up, you know what you're talking about in business and you are a, a, a mentor that other people need to get in touch with. And uh, I think we came up with the topic of, you know, why 2020 will be the best year for entrepreneurs ever. So yes. why don't we just jump into that and let's talk about what 2020 is going to mean and why it's going to be an amazing year for entrepreneurs in general. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I'm super excited to kind of bring this gnosis to the table for everybody because, you know, the sooner you can tap into it, the sooner you're going to be able to manifest the reality you've always wanted. And it really boils down to, um, I like a quote from J.P. Morgan um, although I'm not a fan of his, uh, you know, his his uh, activities and behaviors in the financial markets and stuff, but the quote really uh, hits home, and he says, "Millionaires don't pay attention to astrology; billionaires do." Whoa. Okay. okay. And so, what's happening right now is we're moving out of the age of uh, Pisces and into the age of Aquarius. And so we're moving essentially out of the dark ages into heaven on earth. And so what's happened is earth's frequency, and you can go check out the Schumann residence for yourself and see what's been happening on specific dates in the last handful of months where all these planets are aligning. And it's basically releasing us from a lot of this dualistic uh, nature that we have, uh, you know, we've experienced in this incarnation in this lifetime where we see this black versus white and, you know, right versus wrong. And all this stuff has been playing out for a long, long time, many thousands of years. And we're now crossing over into uh, Christ consciousness, which has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has everything to do with uh, the energy inside of you. That's what Christ consciousness is about, unity consciousness. And that's that's what's happening. You know what's so interesting? And I don't follow the things so much, but it is so weird to me that things that you have read about as kids, whether it's the Bible or whether it's another book that you read or whether it's, um, I'll call them psychics or people that see sure. and whatever, things seem to be lining up in a weird sort of way. And I want to deny, even though I can't, because things are it is very strange. And it's weird because the people that I'm running into are lining up pieces for me. It's almost like I used to have this theory back in the day that um, this book has already been written and we're just playing it out. We just don't know what the end is because we haven't seen it yet. But someone who wrote it already knows. And to me, things are starting to line up and it's scary, but it's almost, it's 
I want to say almost real, but go ahead and tell me some more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, in a, you know, and I know for some, this could be a little bit overwhelming or like this guy's out of his mind or whatever, but you really just got to dig in and look at it. I mean, all this stuff is playing out right now. And I think to your point, you know, I like to say all the world is a stage and, and really when we come into this incarnation, this life, we are, we are given a script. Okay. But when you can realize that you're just playing out the script you were given and you can actually make a decision to say, you know what, I'm going to write my own script. Yeah. That's the moment. That is the moment when you have the shift and you say, you know what, I'm not subject to all this stuff around me, the external world, everything that I want to do and resonate with in this life, I can choose to do it right now. Absolutely. I, I, I don't know how I'm running into this, but I am running into it and I find that it is true. Um, I love the stuff that Dr. Joe Dispenza has been talking about. Sure. Um, and the reason I like him is because he's taken the mysticism out of things and brought it to the scientific level. Yeah. And it makes it easy for people to understand that, mm. or that don't want to believe because it's undeniable. It is undeniable. Right. And we've kind of made the, uh, there's a lot of indications that we've made the real shift at this point where, um, you know, the, the, the masses are finally in a resonance and frequency because this whole game we call life is about energy, frequency, and vibration. Yeah. The whole game is all about that. It's not about well, some religious, you know, the scriptures were written to basically make that understanding occulted so that, only the people that really did the inner work could understand the scriptures and what the stories were really saying about the human body, which is a magnificent, uh, you know, being t- for us to be sort of incarnated into. It is pretty amazing. Didn't Tesla talk about this somewhat in his work? Yeah. I, I, you know, obviously he was one that, that said that if you want to know the, the secrets of the universe, it's all about energy. Uh, frequency and vibration. It is so much about that. Let's talk about this and how it relates to people in business now. How do you, how do we take what we just talked about? And some people will listen to this go, oh, it's too mystical. And I hope <laughs> they stayed long enough to go, you know what, let me just check out maybe some of this is actually affecting my life. So how does it affect people in their business? And we'll relate that to, to life in general. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, uh, this is a, a very important stage, no matter, you know, where you're at, if you're, if you are feeling resistance, it's because the, the new energy that's here. And a lot of people are calling it new earth. And, and so if I use that phrase, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's basically heaven on earth. And we have an opportunity to basically manifest the new earth this is, it's opening up the gates for us to really truly see, Hey, if we put our thoughts onto something and we actually write down what we want, and we speak it into the reality, it's going to show up, which means it, we have new responsibilities, okay? Mm-hmm. In the past, we could think things, and we could judge people, and we could, you know, look at a competitor and not like them, or even use the word hate, you know, all these things that that have played out, especially in business, right? Where we're very competitive, and we, we see the landscape in a different framework than we might when we're at home with our family, right? Mm-hmm. What we've got to do is realize that now that we can manifest nearly, you know, instantaneously with our thoughts and our, our activities, our behavior, we've, we've got a new level of responsibility that comes with that. So we need to be moving and shifting into that resonance of unconditional love and acceptance and appreciation and gratitude, because then that will open doors and remove the resistance that you might be facing in your life or your business so that you see it from a different perspective. Let me back it up and say, um, here, this is one of my thoughts that I had, and it's just back to my kind of almost freaking out about this thing changing and kind of believing and denying at the same time. It's a very hard place to be in, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was talking with um, another one of my friends the other day about Star Trek, mm-hmm. believe it or not. And I was looking at Star Trek, and I said, do you realize Star Trek was just a – dream science fiction dream and do you realize how many of the things in star trek have come to pass because our mind has made those things into reality and if it will start with just a simple thing like the communicator flip it open kirk enterprise Uh everybody had a flip phone we got the talking computers we've got 
VR, which is on, on the newer Star Treks, is the holodeck. We've got these things that are coming to be because we have thought of them and they are coming into existence because of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. What's your thought about that? Well, I think I'd say that um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot going on in terms of the media and movies and TV where they're, they're pre-planting all this stuff for that very reason. Cause I know the consciousness, the collective consciousness will ultimately, you know, manifest those things if they put it in enough places. Yeah. Okay. And so we've got to be very careful with that too, in terms of what do we want or are we just accepting what's being pushed on us? Yes. Right? So how do people use, uh, use might be a bad word, but how do people, I'm going to use use cause I can't think of another word, use this in their business because they could use it for good or they could use it for not so good. Yeah. Um, Talk about that. How do you use this new consciousness in business? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that um, the, the way that I'll answer that question is that I think for most of us, we've been really stuck in the intellect and what I also call conditioned, unconditional thinking. Okay. What we need to do is step back into conscious awareness and start looking almost, you know, you got to become the observer of your own life and in your business. Like, Many of the folks that I coach and do business coaching and help them accelerate their business, they're so inside of their business that they can't see the market in a broader sense to see where the opportunities are. So they're sort of down here, you know, working in all the little stuff when they haven't back up into conscious awareness to realize, oh, this is the true value that I'm, I could that I could bring to the market. I just didn't see it before. Can you give us an example of that with one of the people that either you've worked with that wouldn't mind sharing their story? Yeah, I mean, like one of my uh, newer clients, uh, uh, WP Tangerine, he's got a great service. If you need any kind of, if you've got a WordPress site and you need any kind of um, maintenance or, you know, on-page SEO or, you know, all these updates and tweaks, you know, new products and things added to your website, they can handle it all for a fixed price every month. Okay, great mm -hmm. service. It's a successful and, you know, when he came to me, he was saying like, well, maybe I'll go start another business, you know, as an entrepreneur. And, you know, and I said, wait a second, well, you're not really, you know, what about WP Tangerine? Why don't we just, you, you've already figured out it's already working. You're profitable. It's doing well. Why don't we do more with that? And what we kind of figured out was like, well, anybody that signs up for his service likely needs real SEO services, which is much higher ticket, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's some things we need to fix in the business right now for the core product, but why are you not selling, you know, why aren't you, you already have this huge team of 50 plus employees that actually deliver the, the value of supporting a WordPress site. So you already know the ins and outs of WordPress. Why can't you hire a few other folks that actually know real SEO stuff and can be, you know, applying that and you could sell that back to the existing customers you have. And really now the initial service becomes just, you could even pay a lot more for your customers knowing that X percentage of them are going to pay you a much higher ticket for another service. So that's, a, and, he had to step back into conscious awareness to realize, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. You know? Now talk about that a little bit because a lot of people look at that and go, well, don't other coaches do that? Don't other people to uh, talk about business say, oh, you're just not using the service. Let's um, let's let's use this more efficiently. Why? How and why is it different when people look at it from a consciousness point of view? It's because they they can see the 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 real. They, I think that most um, because of the intellect and what we've done in the past. And so that's a big key of this new transition into new earth in 2020 and beyond into the, the heaven on earth um, frequency that we're in now is that what the rules and everything we used in the past, they don't apply anymore. Okay. We have to really cut those ideas and that programming that we have in our mind. That Give me an example of old programming and how the new programming works so people can understand that. And so I can understand it. Yeah, absolutely. So, let's think in terms of um, even how you hold a meeting. Okay. I'm going to give you kind of a, uh, a metaphoric, a way to think about this. But now when I work with people, I'm the whole thing is, Hey, I'm going to teach you my business acceleration life cycle. It's an easy seven step process. You have to go through it. 
But guess what? What's going to happen is you're going to have a quantum jump if you move from this idea of a hierarchical business. You got the CEO, you got your manager, you got all your employees, you got a guy that sweeps the floors, right? Mm-hmm. You got to, the guy that sweeps the floors needs to be at the round table. We're all, we're all here at the round table trying to come together because our goal is to deliver high value to our market. How do we do that? And the guy that sweeps the floors probably has better ideas than half the other people in the company. Okay. That, so you have to shift right the there mind. Is, is mind blowing. I mean, to me, it's like, you know what? I always talk about, you know, I got to bring in my employees and we all need to share stuff. But did I ever think about bringing in the guy who sweeps the floors? And I would say I have not, you know, I, I will bring in my junior level people. I'll bring in, you know, me and everyone else. And it is definitely a, um, I still think in the hierarchy kind of model, right? Yeah, um, and I got a great story for you. My my good buddy who um, worked for the government for many years, he's 81 now. Um, you know, he's an inventor and he has got a very successful business. He told me that he was sitting in there with the highest level scientists or whatever, big room, you know, with the, with the old school square table with the big chief at the, at the top of the table. And they're all trying to figure out how to solve this, you know, crazy problem. And the guy in the room uh, spraying the plants is the one that had the answer. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's what happens. It's a great example of how we get stuck in our intellect. We get compartmentalized because this is all I do in the business. And, you know, each of your employees or your, your teammate, team members or your partners, we kind of just get into this, stuck into this unconscious condition thinking. And as soon as we can really step back and say, I don't have to prove anything anymore. I can let the ego go. I'm just here to actually bring as much value as I can to our marketplace. And how can we sit at a round table, whether that's virtual or, uh, you know, physical and start to discuss this as assuming everybody's at the same level with the same goal. We're a community, mm-hmm. right? So you're a WP tangerine. Mm-hmm. Is there, um, companies still hierarchical or did they change that mindset now and everyone's basically an equal at the table because i think what most people think and i'm still thinking this way i haven't i'm i'm a, a wannabe convert right i don't understand <laughs> um <laughs> what is it somebody has to be responsible for the bills somebody has to be responsible for the business working and not everybody is putting in the same amount of capital they may be putting in some you know sweat but everyone's getting paid except for usually the ceo who's starving Mm-hmm. Um, how does that work if, with this new consciousness? Well, I think what happens is that, and this is a big thing that, that plays into my business acceleration life cycle and this idea of like, Hey, I can teach you the life cycle, but what, you know, after we've done a few calls, why don't we bring on some other team members? So they're, they're tapping into this. It's not a, Hey, I'm learning this thing. Let me tell you about it. It's Hey, bring them into our meetings, right? Because the sooner everybody's on on board, the better. And a lot of times what you find is that people believe that they're just getting paid to complete tasks, right? Because they're being told, hey, this is my job responsibility. Here's my resume. All these things that play into, I got this position and I'm here to do these things so that I can get a paycheck. And the sooner you can um, start to tap in and get this community and this roundtable mindset going, then what what the the business owner starts to realize is that many of these folks have other unique gifts that they can deliver and bring to the table that they never has nothing to do with what was on the resume or the task they're fulfilling. Okay. That is super exciting. That is is really exciting. I love that idea. And what happens is when you, when you work and just like this right now, I I would, you know, there's nothing better I'd like to be doing than talking to you right now. Okay. (laughs) And so this doesn't feel like work to me. It feels like fun. Okay. It's fun for me. (laughs) It's because it's part of my unique gift to share like this with other folks. And so Mm -hmm. the sooner you can help people realize and identify, because a lot of times we don't know what our unique gifts are. We're just going through the motions. We're playing out the script and we kind of need people that work with us all day long, spending eight hours or however long with us all day long to say, you know what? You're really good at this. Yeah. Yeah. And so the sooner we can resonate in that, in our work or in our personal lives with what we love, right? Let the ego go so that you can then focus on like, well, what do I really love to do? Why don't I just do that? Yeah. Then I, you just see so much value and new, new things coming from everybody on the team. 
Yeah. That's amazing. I, I look at it, I'm looking at it from a um, musician's point of view right now. Um, I'll leave my other business side apart. And one of the things that I have found when trying to play music, especially forming a band, um, is you don't always want to play with the technically best players. I think you want to play with the people that you can get along with. Because the thing about a band to me is I actually believe that any band can make it, whatever that means in their mind, as long as they can get along well enough to stay together long enough to make it. Right. And I think what you're talking about with companies, uh, more formal companies, is that ability also, but then also allowing those people like the guy who's sweeping the floor or watering the plants Uh to now bring in those ideas also, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think you make a good point with the bands where you see sometimes lead singers think that they, you know, you know, they're, they're the, they're the reason everybody exists, right? Right. Hierarchy, you know, long rectangle table, right? Yeah. I used to, um, when I was playing with bands or doing some of my other stuff, one of the things that I, I realized uh, early on was mostly bar owners would think that they're the reason that people came to their bar was because, um, they, you know, they had beer or because they had, you know, some kind of beverage or food that other people wanted. And I said, you realize that you can go to your bar or the bar next door or the one across town and get a Miller Lite or whatever it is that they're selling, right? And I said, really, the people come here because of the environment and how that environment is structured and not for the drinks, not necessarily for the food. It's for the energy that that place provides, Right. And mm-hmm. the other people that come there, especially the entertainment that's going to be there, that that entertainment is key to how that place is going to vibe. Mm-hmm. So, and I think you just said the right word, vibe, right? It's all about the vibration. And I think yeah. that's another thing that's coming into this is that, you know, as a business owner, you know, look for ways. Um, I, I call it the little big things. And there's a book on this, too, uh, where, like, why don't you put flowers in the office? Why don't you? Right. It's all these things that bring new energy in that make this uh, business experience this going to work experience much more elevated. Like you're excited to wake up in the morning and go to work because it's such a great vibe at work and the people are happy and everybody's excited to work together towards, you know, a common goal as opposed to, well, I'm, I'm in this department and I just complete these tasks and I get a check and I go home and, you know, I do it all, all over again. You know, I love that this whole um but just you're uh, opening my mind as we're sitting here talking. And I, I thought I was open-minded and I'm like, you know what? I could be more open-minded about what's going on here. Um, and I'm talking to, you know, I've got VAs that I work with and um, I've got other suppliers I work with and they're really all part of the team, right? They all should be uh, instrumental in helping each other grow. So, so that, let's talk back again, more business stuff for business guys. What What's yeah. going to make 2020 awesome for them? best year ever. Well, I think it's, you know, and I think to your point, just to, to, re, to cap off that idea is that with, cause I've got lots of virtual folks too. And what I do is I'll use, you know, if I've got them on Skype or wherever they've got them, WhatsApp or whatever it is you're using, make a group, bring them mm-hmm. together and just be, you know, step into that leadership position to bring the round table together saying, Hey, I know you guys necessarily don't work together, but I just wanted to, you know, show you my appreciation, gratitude for all the hard work you do. I wanted to introduce you to other team members that I work with. You know, here's Michelle. She does this. Here's, you know, Roy. He does that. Like just create that open environment to where people can get to know each other and realize they're working on a common goal um, within the business, even if they're virtual. Right? Yeah. And then when you do your um, accelerator or your business uh, ex- uh, coaching, uh-huh. Um, I assume that you teach people how to break down the hierarchical structures and work in this sort of way. I'm still a little confused on the, um, everyone looks at like the, the owner of the company, the CEO is going to make all the money. Is that something that still happens in your structure or how does that sort of thing get worked out in a structure where now everyone is contributing what they, what they're meant to contribute? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that the the key is um, putting real intention on 
starting to identify and write down everybody's unique gifts because the unique gifts will allow them to shine more value in the business so that they can not only come to work excited about the work they're doing, but also clearly deliver a lot more value than they are right now, just completing tasks in whatever department they work in. You know, I, I would say that one of the reasons that I didn't fit into corporate America, I messed up a couple of times and had real jobs, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) was the fact that I would always come up with ideas and we could never implement them or try them because there was a set way of doing things, even though it might be a better idea, whatever, of course, that better might mean Mm -hmm. it didn't fit with everyone else. Mm -hmm. And um, I would have loved to have seen some of the jobs that I worked in, the two that I worked in, open up and do a structure like this where now you can look at that idea and say, you know what, that's something there. Maybe we can do a a test. Maybe we can put together a small team and see if it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that plays into the, the, the new energy that's here that says, you know what, we're going to, uh, no matter what your position is, we're going to, we're going to lay our, we're going to leave our egos out outside the door here Mm -hmm. and we're going to consider anything because we have a common goal to serve our market and bring more value to them. Right. And that, that's another thing, right? You keep hearing me say, bring more value. It's not about making more money. The money is a side effect of delivering a massive amount of value in a market. Thank you. That's a very, very good point. That, matter of fact, when I, when I put this up, I'm going to put that on the screen in big letters. Like this value <laughs> does not equal money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's just a side effect of delivering value. So if you can get into that mindset, conscious awareness, then you see, okay, we could be, we have everything. We have great people, great resources. We could be delivering a lot more value to our market, which would naturally bring more exchange of dollars for that value right. from our customer base. Wanted to answer your previous question about why 2020 and what business owners should be thinking about and doing beyond what we talked about is just knowing that you can manifest whatever you actually have intention on. And the simple phrase to remember is just put your attention on your intention. Your attention is the currency. That's the currency in your day. If whatever you put your attention on, whether it's, oh, my competitors, you know, making moves and we're not getting there or the other side of, hey, I have this, this project I've had on the back burner that I've been meaning to get launched. And I'm going to put my attention on that because that's an intention I've always had. It's going to manifest for you. Okay. So that that's going to come with responsibility. Meaning if you allow your, your thoughts to go towards, Oh my God, my competitors catching up to me. Well, you're going to manifest that. Mm-hmm. But if you took, put it towards, this is what we need to do next. And I'm going to put my attention on that and make sure my team is focused on that uh, intention that I want to bring forward. Then it will manifest very, very quickly for you. I love that. And um, also, does that that go toward people writing down their goals and being very specific about their goals? Yes, um, I think that's important. But there's an element of that that can actually limit you, okay? Because many of the goal writing strategies are from the past and from rules of the past, okay? Uh, So uh. many many times, um, so yes, but what I would say is that – Almost write down things that you've dreamed about accomplishing, not things that you just, your mind, your unconscious program mind thinks you could prob- probably pull off. <laughs> gotcha. That, I, I, Does that I, make sense? It totally makes sense. And it's um, a reaffirmation of things that I've been thinking and reading and have not put fully into practice yet. So. And I like to, you know, once I've got that big dream, at, which relates to, hey, I, it, I don't have to worry about the why right now. I want to, I want to talk about and think about and be projecting what it, what's the what's the thing I would love to do. I would love to, you know, just keep that as a broad idea that it doesn't matter if it's this business or that business. In ten years, it'll still hold solid. I call it the one big objective. Nice in my coaching. Nice. And then you can say, okay, well, now let me look at the next 90 days. What can I do in the next 90 days? Where can I put my attention on that intention? Because that's going to show up, this big dream that you thought couldn't 
you know, would take years and all this stuff. It's not going to take years anymore. It's just going to show up at your doorstep with the right mindset. Yeah. That's excellent. I, I, I love your philosophy and I love the fact that we actually are sitting here talking about it. I, uh, I think it's um, you've reopened up my mind just from sitting here and talking to this and that's, man, we got to stay in closer contact. <laughs> I'm right here, brother. Um, tell me about uh, Zen fusion and about sync sumo and how people can get in touch with you and also about your coaching. Cause I want people to be able to um, get more of your type of energy into their businesses. I think it's amazing. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So yeah, Sync Sumo, as we've been doing for years, um, we sync uh, uh, your contacts in from your CRM or your email marketing system mm -hmm. into Facebook custom audiences. And also, if you're capturing leads directly in Facebook with their lead ads, we can pull those out of Facebook and, and push them into your email marketing campaigns in real time. And you can go to SyncSumo.com to check that out. At Zen Fusion, we're a Facebook ads agency, and we're heavily focused on scaling. So if you're somebody that's trying to spend, you know, or maybe you had success spending five or $10,000 a month, but as you start to move it to 50,000, the whole thing just falls apart on you. Uh, we've got that formula figured out. And I know that we uh, taught you some of those skills back in the day. Um, so if you need, you know, if you've got Facebook ads going and they're working, but you can't really, you don't know how to scale it up or you're, you have, uh, you, you know, better unique gifts to be spending your time and attention on something else in the business. And you want to hand that off. Um, Mitch and the team at Zenfusion can really help you get that uh, business growth going through Facebook ads. And then on my business coaching side, it's at 8020business.com. And um, you can learn more about, and I've got a lot of uh, great videos um, that you can kind of build on from this uh, talk that we've had today that will help you too at 8020. I'll be sure to put uh, all the links down in the description so people can get to it. And I'm so excited that people are listening to what you have to say. And I'm hoping that people take some positive action and start moving that direction. So, yeah, just start Thanks sharing the love. And yeah, I love it, brother. Thank you for having me and giving me an opportunity to share with others. That, that's what I'm about. So. Awesome, man. Thanks. And I'll be in touch soon. Bye bye. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. I was so happy to have Justin with us here today. He brought a completely different way of looking at business and life to most of us that hadn't been thinking in that sort of way. And it's something that I personally really bonded with or drew, I, I really liked it. So I'm going to be checking out even more of his work. I've put descriptions for uh, Kim and his work and his websites and everything in the descriptions of this post. Take a look at it and get in touch with him. He's a great guy. This is Michael Jackson. Peace.